Thank you to Skillshare for bringing us today's video. Alright guys, so Lightroom is full of sliders that look simple but behave completely opposite to what you might expect. And the key to a great edited image is balancing exposure, contrast, and color saturation so it looks natural and intentional. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys five Lightroom sliders that you're most probably using wrong in regards to getting a balanced looking image to avoid that over edited look. Even if you've been editing for years, I'm convinced you're gonna learn something new today, especially with the bonus tips scattered throughout the video, like how to replicate that dreamy Leica lens look with micro contrast, or how to uniformly increase or decrease exposure while keeping your images contrast and saturation perfectly balanced. So let's jump onto the computer and start with the two sliders that most people think are straightforward, but almost always use them in isolation. So the first two sliders are what I consider the most powerful in Lightroom, and there is a reason why they are two of the first sliders you'll see when you first open up Lightroom. And that's exposure and contrast, which are the two sliders that actually complement each other when used correctly, or they'll actually fight each other when used wrong. Let me show you what I mean. So this is the photo that I wanna use for this demonstration, and this is edited with my Lightroom presets. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset my exposure and reset my contrast. We all know how exposure works, right? We lift the exposure, it lifts the exposure. We decrease exposure, it decreases the exposure on a global scale. You can also change your exposure up here in the histogram by clicking and moving if you feel free to. But what I wanna show is that when you lift your exposure, you're actually reducing the contrast and the saturation of the image. And vice versa, when you decrease the exposure, you also increase the saturation and increase the contrast. So these two sliders are in their own little box and they're meant to be used in harmony and complement each other. When you lift your exposure, you also wanna lift your contrast to balance out the loss in saturation and the loss in contrast, and vice versa. When you decrease your exposure, you wanna reduce the contrast to reduce the saturation and also reduce the contrast to balance the overall image. And lastly, these two sliders actually reduce or increase the perceived saturation. Notice when I move any of these sliders down here, the vibrance and the saturation sliders never actually move. And that's what I mean by when you increase or decrease any of these sliders, you're increasing or decreasing the perceived saturation while the actual saturation and vibrance is never touched. If you're unsure of what these two tools do, I have made a tutorial explaining how these two work, which you can watch right here. But in essence, the saturation increases the overall saturation of the image, while when you increase the vibrance, it's only increasing the unsaturated colors to match the saturated colors, so you get a more uniform saturation in the end. So in conclusion, exposure and contrast not only affect the contrast of your image, but also the saturation. And my biggest issue in Lightroom is that you can't uniformly increase or decrease exposure while maintaining the same contrast and saturation. Capture One solves this with their loop based control, letting you lift or drop exposure without touching contrast or saturation, unlike Adobe's standard RGB exposure model. But guys, I've actually kind of jailbroken Lightroom in a way, so I can raise or lower exposure uniformly with contrast and saturation. And let me just show you how that works now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset exposure and contrast. And what I've done to hack Lightroom is I've made presets on having positive exposure and positive contrast. And the ratio that I've figured out along with using math with AI is plus 0.5 exposure and plus 15 contrast. And the way that this works is if you come up here to the amount slider, sliding the amount slider to the right is gonna uniformly lift your exposure and also your contrast at the same time. And then if you lower it all the way back down to zero, that is gonna make the exposure and the contrast zeroed as well. And then I also have a preset if you wanna go the opposite way so if you want to reduce the exposure as well as the contrast uniformly you drag this to the left and you'll see that you can 
reduce the exposure and the contrast uniformly at the same time to maintain a balanced and beautiful image. So in conclusion, I think these are two of the most powerful tools and definitely my most used tools in Lightroom. And they might be obvious tools, right? Like exposure lifts exposure, right? But it also affects the saturation and the contrast. And contrast is designed to be used with exposure in harmony to correct the effects of that increased or decreased perceived saturation and contrast. Okay, before we move on to the last sliders, you're probably using wrong and how to change the contrast without even touching the saturation at all and how to get that soft, dreamy film look, but also with beautiful micro contrast. But before we get into that, I just wanna thank Skillshare for teaching me the knowledge that I share with you guys. I've actually been diving deep into a Skillshare class called Adobe Lightroom Classic, Advanced Workflow and Tips for Enhancing Your Color Edits. It's packed with techniques that go way beyond the basics, things like the tone curve, HSL, and in section eight, I'm learning about harmonizing colors. And guys, I really enjoy watching how other people approach Lightroom because it's often different to the way that I work and I end up learning a lot. This harmonizing section in particular stood out to me. It's all about getting those tones to work together so nothing feels out of place, which is perfect if you ever edited a photo and feel like something was off but couldn't figure out why. Skillshare has over 300 classes on Lightroom right now. Just search Lightroom and pick exactly what you want to learn. And guys, it's not just about photo editing. There are thousands of classes taught by photographers, designers, illustrators, filmmakers, and all kinds of creators who work in the industry. You can learn at your own pace and branch out into anything from logo design all the way to creative writing. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description or scan this QR code will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So get started today. And let's move on to three powerful tools that I feel get a bit mistreated or undervalued. And there's definitely been some memes about these tools that I think has resulted in a bit of mistrust or lack of confidence using these three fantastic tools. And what I'm talking about is the texture, the clarity, and the dehaze slider. Okay, so texture actually targets the fine detail or the very contrasty parts of an image. So lifting it, you can see that when you reduce the texture, all of these slat tiles will kind of blend in. If you increase, it will actually make those slat tiles more pronounced, sharper, and just more punchier and contrasty. While when you increase clarity, it actually does the same similar effect, but it's more on a global scale. And you can see that the effect is way more punchier compared to texture. And then again, we all know what happens when you reduce the clarity too much, the whole image just becomes soft, blurred, and very dreamy and euphoria looking, as if there was Vaseline attached to the front element of the lens. So quickly to conclude that, texture and clarity both soften or increase contrast, but texture affects the fine contrasty edges of an image, while clarity affects the whole image more uniformly. Now I wanna show you how I use these two tools together to remove that clinical sharpness from modern lenses to get a more vintage lens render to enhance that filmic look as lenses like the Leica Simicrom or even these Typoc lenses are softer in the mid-tones but they have that beautiful micro contrast and pop. So vintage lenses often have a lower mid-tone contrast like you get with negative clarity due to the older coatings. This gives the image a softer, more atmospheric rendering. But then at the same time, those lenses still can render micro contrast really well, which is exactly what positive texture does. And I feel like this combo gives you that dreamy but detailed filmic vintage lens look. You have a soft overall image, yet you have those beautiful micro contrast details. Okay, then lastly, the dehaze slider is pretty obvious, right? If we slide it to the right, it does remove fog. If we slide it to the left, it kind of adds a more haze and foggier look. You can also do this with the tone curve by dragging this black point across, which is basically what the dehaze slider is doing. It mainly affects the shadows and the darkest parts of the image. But for my last tip, this image was shot on the Nikon ZF and that camera is addicted or attracted to dust. And if I lift up my dehaze slider to the max, 
You'll notice that you can start to see all these different dust spots, which just makes cleaning up these dust spots so much easier. And this is a really great technique if you want to print your work. Once you've gone and cleaned up all of these different dust spots, you can just go back and reset the dehaze slider. And that is a bit of a technique and a trick when you want to print your work. And then one last trick, and that refers to my Lightroom presets, which are linked in the description down below. So if you do like the way that I edit my photos and you want to emulate this filmic look, they are linked in the description down below. And if you sign up to my newsletter, you'll actually receive 20% off your first order. I use my V3 pack to edit this photo and you can scroll through once you find a preset that you like. You always have the amount slider up here. So if you don't think the preset is strong enough, you can increase the amount that you want the preset and notice how these will move. It would adjust your tone curve, etc. And if you go the other way, it will decrease what the preset is doing. And then you can have your finer adjustments here. So if you think a preset that you've bought from any creator is too strong, remember you always have the amount slider up here as well. All right, guys, that is all for today's video. If you did like the video, you know what to do. Uh, comment if you do have some additional tips for other people to learn or if you think I made a mistake and make sure you hit that subscribe button because there is some new juicy videos coming your way all of the photos were shot on the Nikon ZF and I did a trip with just shooting on manual focus lenses from Typog and I've also figured out a way to have Lightroom profiles to mimic the look on Fujifilm on a Nikon camera. So if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe for that. And if you want a clear cut definition on what the tonal adjustments does versus the tone curve, definitely go check out this video right here. This video did really well in the YouTube algorithm and I got a lot of positive feedback. So go check out that video and we will see you next week. All right, bye for now.